you know, everything's wrong about this scenario. The time of day, the lighting, the tide heights and everything. Just terrible. And on top of that, it's raining. Hmm. But I love conditions like this because it makes it more challenging. So, hi guys and welcome to this week's video. Jack's just telling me we're going on to a nudist beach or what was apparently a nudist beach. <laughs> Back with Jack again, by the way. Hello. <laughs> where are we? Where are you? Tell him, where, where are we? It's Carton on the Suffolk coast. That's it then. Not giving too many secrets away, obviously. <laughs> so before we get into today's video, I've just spent the last couple of days at Haysborough Beach running some Nissy workshops. And to be fair, it was fantastic. Great bunch of guys, but more importantly than that, the weather, the conditions, everything were brilliant. So, as Jack and I are wandering what looks to be a long way off up this beach to get to where we want to photograph some groins, etc., I'll show you my favorite half dozen pictures from the past two days. That line is perfect, isn't it? Oh, look. <laughs> this is really cool because, and this is a bit of a challenge for me, and for you as well, hopefully. Jack brought me to a location where he's photographed one of his favorite groins, one of his favorite pictures he's up, uh, uploaded to Instagram, and it's fantastic. Now this is the problem. Because Jack has shown me where it is, I'm clearly not gonna come and just recreate his picture. I'm not gonna copy his picture. He's a real darling of a fella, and he even said, just copy, it doesn't matter. But no, that's not what I want to do. I want to see the value in his picture and then come to the same location and try and make it my own. But just so you know what we're talking about, I'll show you Jack's picture and assuming that you are into your minimal photography then you'll hopefully love this picture because i think it's brilliant now i'm not going to give too many of the secrets away but behind me here is the post the bendy over post and the set of groins where jack has created that picture from obviously he's zoomed in he's taken a picture and then he's removed the elements of the image that he doesn't want in the image because it's fine art and you can you can afford to do that now that's fine and i could do the same again but like i said earlier i don't want to do that i want to make this my own but for the purpose of this exercise i'm going to recreate jack's picture the best i can under these conditions and i'm certainly not going to blame the conditions if i don't uh, do a job as good as what jack's done but I'm then, I'm gonna talk you through the process of my mindset of how I can go about trying my best to make it my own. Will it be as good? Don't know. We're about to find that out together. Okay, so let's backtrack a little and briefly explain what this video is all about. If you're new in your photography journey, I'll assume you follow photographers that inspire you, someone like Jack, for instance. If you do, then I will always suggest that you try and emulate their work. Go to the same locations and copy their techniques and styles. It's a fantastic way of learning. But, and this is the important word here, once you become proficient at photography, then learn to see a scene differently. Make the same location 
your own. So in this video, I'm going to demonstrate my thought process in the journey of how to see a scene in a very different way and make it yours. As you probably know, if you follow the channel, I'm using the Z8 at the moment, 24 120 mil lens. I've got a polarizer on there and I'm obviously going to shoot this with a 10 stop filter on just to flatten that water out. So let's throw you guys in camera and let's talk about composition to begin with. Jack likes square crops. I'm not a square crop fan, but like I say, for the purpose of this exercise, I'll try and cheat and recreate his picture. And it's something like that. Now what's going to happen in this instance is I'm going to remove all of these groins in post-production, flatten that water out obviously and blend that horizon in to make it my style of fine art photography, which obviously is exactly the same as Jack's by the way. So right, nothing any more to add than that. I'll take a picture and then I'll show you what that looks like once I've post-processed it. So right off the bat, we've recreated Jack's picture. And the reason why I say that, because it's important that when you're first starting out in photography, I urge you to copy people. So if you see my compositions or your favorite photographer's compositions, copy them, try and nail it on. Footballers do it, musicians do it, why not photographers? Once you've learned your trade and once you've managed to copy pictures so well that you would actually think it was the originator's images or the original photographer's images, then, then start to make it your own. And that's really what this video is all about. I'm gonna copy Jack. He's there, by the way. I'm gonna copy Jack. And then I'm gonna see if I can, can I better it? Can I make it my own? Can I make it more personable to me? That's it. It's gonna be quite tricky as it is, because it's raining and the rain is coming right in to the lens. Not really mention the camera too much, but I am enjoy using it, especially for long exposures, because you can extend the shutter speed. With my camera, I have to, once you go past 30 seconds, put it into bulb mode, but my camera luckily has a bulb timer built in, but it's still a fuff. As much as I don't have to attach any uh, external timers or triggers to it, I can still do it all in camera. But this makes a lot of sense because you go to 30 seconds, then 60 seconds, then two minutes and four, eight, I think up to 16 minutes just by turning the dial. I mean, why aren't all cameras like that? It's ridiculous. Right. Bit of an update for you. <laughs> the rain just got worse and worse and worse. Some of you, some of you observant lot might notice that I'm wearing a different jacket. That's because I got soaked wet through. So despite persevering and persevering with the nasty weather, I decided to call it quits. I went back to the van, had a good old chat with Jack as you do and I grabbed a cup of coffee and it has to be said a bacon sandwich because there's no way I could have continued. There's only so much wiping of a filter that you can do before it cheeses you off. Now I'm back, it's some three hours later and the tide has gone out by three hours. I'll spin you guys around now and let you have a look. And so now I really am up against it, but, but I'm gonna use that as just another challenge that's all um, right okay so let's carry on where we left off so as a recap I'm demonstrating how I would expect you guys to emulate others to learn your photography skills but then how to make the same scene your own two minutes and away she goes right so now we're back to square one I've got my picture, and I've got to tell you, it's looking pretty cool. So I'll show you the picture now that I've captured just to recreate Jack's picture. 
I blend the horizon, get it all sorted, and basically this is the before, and this is the after. And now as you can see, I'm very happy with that result. So ordinarily, if I was learning photography and I'd seen one of Jack's pictures and decided to try and copy it, which I would suggest that you do, not just with Jack's pictures, but with any photographer's pictures when you're first out and out, go out and just try and copy them. But once you've done that, what's so important is the bit that follows, i.e. what can I do now to make this my own? What can I do? That's now the challenge. That's the challenge I'm faced with, and that's the challenge I want you guys to face yourself with as well. You've got to now make it your own. Right, let's throw you guys in camera and let's talk you through this process. That, without stating the obvious, is the shot that I captured. Let me just darken that down ever so slightly just so you can see and make sure we're in focus. Right, okay, there, perfect. Wonderful. So, without stating the obvious, um, coming back might be a problem because straight away, we're now faced with the sea. Having said that though, over a long exposure, this area here will be quite nice and reflected and it'll be the same as the sea out there, but it'll just be a bit whiter. So that could add an element of interest. But what I'm looking at doing first of all is, had a long lengthy conversation with Jack about the subject being right in the middle of the frame. There are times when it works in the middle of the frame and there are times when it, it doesn't. Jack's picture without stating the obvious works an absolute treat because he's only opted to show the end part of the groins. But what I want to do now is, my first port of call, is to just move, let's have a look. I want to move the composition to maybe something like that. So I want to look at now maybe something like that. Really minimalistic. I'd possibly lose a couple of the groins here. I don't like this groin here, especially on the edge of the frame. I might lose a couple of those, obviously blend the horizon in post-production. But I think, without stating the obvious, if I took that picture from this angle, that would work a real treat even under these conditions. So that's the first thing I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take that picture and make that my own. Right, I really like that picture. I think it's cool, really cool. Now, I'm gonna change it up again because a couple of things I don't like. These three supports here with the horizontal wooden supports going across them. I think they're overlapping and they look a bit messy. So something else I could do. If I move myself further to the left hand side and get closer to the water, you can see now they start to separate. If I come further back, like there for instance, let's just dig ourselves in and get a little bit closer Something along those lines there. Again, I want two thirds sky. I pretty much have to choose two thirds of sky because I can't choose two thirds of the floor. I could do, but if I chose two thirds of the floor, I'd end up with a situation like that, where this is either gonna be white with water or is it gonna come all the way up? Maybe not all the way up. Yeah, so, hmm, hmm. Plus, I like, I like my subject to have a bit of room to breathe. And I think if I push the boundaries of the rules of thirds, like I'm doing here, by opting for two thirds of the sky, most people wouldn't do that. Most people would, would go the other way around. And so I think that's a way of making it your own as well. So from here, this is pretty cool. It's starting to rain again. What's the chances, eh? It's starting to rain again. Blooming heck. So, not only just started raining again, but the tide obviously is still going out. <laughs> so, if I start rushing, or if you think I'm rushing a bit, it's because I'm trying to get as much of, of, of this as I can done before the tide washes out altogether and I lose it. That is just awesome. That is just awesome. 
So already I've made this my own. That is, assuming that you like this style of photography, minimalistic, fine arty, black and white, whatever, call it what you want, blended horizon, that to me already is a nailer. A nailer, a nailer, a nailer. I love that. An idea for a composition as well is to shoot straight down its throat. That's okay, but of course it's looking very, very busy. But it is an option. Ordinarily, I would throw my three or six stop filter on and I would utilize the receding waves over a second or two exposure to create a bit of foreground interest. We've all seen those pictures, but that's not the style of photography or imagery that I'm after today. Having said that though, as you can see, where all the foam is up here over a long exposure, then this would end up with a lovely white into blue gradation. Let me throw you guys back in camera just to show you what I mean. So this is me looking straight down its throat. So if I opted for, I'm, I'm such a stickler for rules of thirds. I don't wanna, I don't wanna take a picture like that. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with, with taking a picture like that, but that's not really what I'm after. So I'm looking at taking a picture like that. Now, if I was to grab a shot like that, you could see that almost the bottom third of the frame is going to be white. Not quite rules of thirds, but I think the gradation between the sea there and this white, as you could see here, will be, I think it'll add a, another element of interest. Hmm, okay. Well, the thing is with me, if I think it'll work, I'd rather make that decision tomorrow, not today. So I'd rather just take the picture and take a look at the image that I create from this composition tomorrow in the cold light of day and decide then whether I like it or not. <laughs> That's not bad though. That's not bad. It's always worrying when you do this during a long exposure, but depends on the severity of the water hitting the filter. You can generally get away with it. The longer the shutter speed, the better, by the way. Hmm. What a challenge this is proving to be today. I don't know. I think it's nice. I think also, also, when it comes to this style of photography, the art form is in what's not there more than what's there. And that might seem an oddball thing to say, but the art form really, it, I mean, look at this image now for a second. Now, two thirds of this image contains nothing. It's called negative space. And in my mind, what stands a good photographer out from an average photographer is somebody who knows when to use negative space correctly. It doesn't mean to say if you haven't got negative space in your picture, it's a crap picture. I'm not saying that for a second. What I'm saying is, especially for this style of photography, it's probably more about the space than it is the subject. If you place the subject in an oddball part of the frame, for instance, like I do, like Jackson with his image, by just placing that one solitary item right in the middle of a square crop. I mean, 90% of his image is nothing. And yet, it works a treat and it looks incredible. So I suppose part of this is, is knowing when to leave negative space, how much negative space to leave and where to leave the negative space. So maybe, maybe, if you want to get into this style of photography, maybe it's about learning what not to photograph. To photograph nothing. Where should the nothing be in the image? Seems an oddball thing to say, but negative space is such a good, such a good thing in photography. It really is, especially this style. I've taken one more shot. I've come to a different set of groins 
and I've created a pretty similar image to the ones that I captured earlier. But again, it's really about once you've copied somebody and then you attempt to make it your own, once you know that skill set, you can apply that to any subject, albeit very similar. I've just literally come 200 yards down the beach and I've chosen another set of groins. Also on these next two images coming up, especially the second image, I've opted for a real minimalistic feel, following on from what I said a few seconds earlier. This time, I might have gone too far, I don't know. Compositionally wise, I know it works a treat because it still falls within the rules of thirds, but there is so much negative space in, especially the second image, it might feel a little bit uncomfortable for you to view it. Do me a favor, leave a comment down below. And just before you look at these next two images, or my last two images, and my favorite image of the day, I met Jack earlier on. He's a wonderful photographer. When it comes to minimalistic fine art style of photography, there is nobody better in the UK, trust me. If you don't know who he is, go and check out his Instagram. I bet you'll fall in love with his work. I talk about falling in love with somebody's work. Do me a favor, as always, help support this channel. Give it a thumbs up if you're new here and you want to find your way back. Then help support the channel again, that's twice I've said that, by subscribing. I've got one or two bits and pieces in the back catalog that you might even enjoy. Right, on to these last two images and my favorite of the day. Mm -hmm. 